We're talking with Walid Shubat, one of the world's leading experts on terrorism on the Middle East. Now, Walid, we wanted to have you on live a couple days ago to explain to us what's happening in Syria and the ties of Obama and his and his uh, Muslim brother Malik and everything that Malik has been doing regarding his connections with radical Islam. Then we got a shocking text and email from one of your associates, and I want you to lay out this story to the American people, because what it now appears to be happening is because of your courageous investigative reporting, you now are claiming you are the victim of government-sponsored harassment by the Obama regime, correct? That is correct. What what well, is happening, Walid? What's happening with your phones? What has been going on? What kind of harassment and intimidation and persecution have you been enduring? First of all, I got I know that they are very upset at what I am doing regarding President Obama's brother because the Blaze called me. They have called the government asking them to comment on some of my research in which the government expressed that they are very upset that the president is upset about the things that we are doing regarding this family. Okay, so now we know that the government, they, they're trying to even deny that my translation is accurate. So I asked the Blaze to ask the government to give us the correct translation regarding the issues that we brought, whether it's from Egypt, them claiming that they're charging President Obama with supporting terrorism or not. So far, I haven't seen the government give an alternative translation to my work regarding the Obama family. Okay, then you begin for, for several months. You, you would see your telephone says busy when you try to use your telephone, which means they tap into your telephone without the ringer going on in which they can hear and listen to what you are saying inside the house. And then one point in time, this busy signal remained indefinite. Somehow it got messed up, and we had to call the telephone company, in which the telephone company said this is the most unusual thing they've ever seen. When I asked the telephone company to change my telephone number, they looked into my records, and the operative who's working on the other line says, in my life, I've never seen something on your file that I've seen ever before. I can't tell you what it is. I need to speak to my supervisor. Bingo. That tells me there is something going on. They're listening into my home, and then you get this harassment phone calls, several per day. And then I have one interview, a pre-recorded Okay, now hold on, Waleed. Before you get to the interview, what kind of harassment phone calls have you been getting? All sorts of noises, sounds you know, hanging up, uh, it, just, it just doesn't reveal anything to you. It's just harassment. That's all it is. Uh, you know, I've, I've spoken to uh, security forces that I've known, friends of mine, and they said we're in the fifth generation harassment by the government, and they have very sophisticated system. You can never trace any of the numbers. Every time you try to trace those numbers, you cannot trace the numbers. It's done by professionals, they told me. It is a professional entity that is doing this, and it's very likely the United States government. Uh, now, Waleed, now then, this is what really sent chills down my spine. So you do a pre-taped interview, a pre-recorded interview. It hasn't aired yet. And what happened? Right. What happened? Right. In fact, the interview was Rick, Rick Wiles, uh, a Christian TV station, uh, sorry, radio station, in which we're good friends and we interviewed before. We finished the pre-recorded interview. Several minutes later, I get called from one of these phone calls, and my pre-recorded interview is played on my, to my ear. They're playing my interview. And not only are they are playing the interview to my ear, but they're, make, they're making it like it's a, it's a jockey at the end of the, of, the, of the line in which they're repeating the same words again and again and again, you know, making it go back and forth, you know, so it could become a nuisance to my ear and it is the recording that I just did five minutes before with Rick Wiles. I called Rick Wiles asking him, you know, uh, why is the recording that we had is being played to me? You know, have you done anything? He was also very shocked. He says, what are you talking about? I didn't call you to play the recording to you. So it is somebody who can tap into your telephone. In fact, this conversation we're having right now is being tapped by the government. So it's, it's somebody with sophistication that could tap into your telephone. This is not harassment calls only. This is someone who can record every single conversation you have. They wanted me to know that we are watching you, that we are after you. Even when I'm traveling on my cell phone, I call my son. My line goes to a different line in which it is a harassment call again. 
and my son says, I hear the ring coming from you, but I say hello and nobody can answer on the other line. And this is the kind of thing they're doing to us. They're trying to make me tired, to exhaust me, but they do not understand. I'm a Christian from the East. I am not one of those Christians you watch on television. Um, we are people who will, are willing to die. And this is the United States government. You can, they can bother me. They can harass me. They can destroy me. They try to. It doesn't matter. Nothing is going to stop an Eastern Christian from fighting this fight. I am not from the Middle West. I am from the Middle East. Just as I was a stubborn when I was a terrorist, I am stubborn as a Christian. Nothing can stop us from revealing the truth to the American people. Uh, Walid, let me just ask you this then, one final question. You believe, and you're going to say this, you're on the record, you believe the Obama regime, the Obama administration, the U.S. government, is deliberately harassing, targeting, and spying on you because of your investigative work, not just regarding Syria, not just regarding the ties to Saudi Arabia, but in particular because of his brother, Malik's brother's involvement with radical Islam, correct? That is correct. This is what we believe, and this is what we learned from the blaze uh, when they called the government asking them to comment, and the comments, their comments clearly stated that they are very, very upset at the work we're doing. Are you going to move? Are you making any plans to leave, or are you going to stay and, and, and hunker down? Uh, as I said before, I'm hunkering down. It is till death do us part. The government needs to understand the type of Christians they're dealing with. We are not the kind of Christians that will go silent. We are more encouraged by the harassment. It will continue to encourage me to understand that persecution is part and parcel of this faith that I believe in. So nothing will stop me. It will simply encourage me. Let them bring it on. Bring on the whole world. Nothing can stop us from standing and fighting the fight as Christians. For years, people are ashamed to be called Christians in this country. For years, we count out to all kinds of ism in this world, compromising our faith and what we stand for. We are not compromising. We will never compromise. We should never compromise in what we believe. We have been talking with Walid Shubat, uh, international expert on terrorism and the Middle East, critic of the Obama regime. Walid, where can people go, and I'm sure a lot want to, where can they go to uh, buy your books, read your blogs, read your writings? Shubat.com, just as you spell the word shoe, S-H-O-E, bat, B-A-T, Shubat.com. Now I'll be accused of doing it for selling books. <laughs> the, might of, the might of CNN internationally try to destroy me for selling books at an event and selling Christian books. The might of CNN try to slander me, nothing but slander, and it never stopped us. CNN failed. The government will fail. The whole world will fail. The only thing that will separate us from the love that we have for God is death, so they have to come and kill us if they want to. They're welcome to do so. I am awaiting. We have been talking with Walid Shubat. Walid, stay safe. God bless you, my friend. And we'll get you back on the Kuna Report soon. I also had uh, some emails when I was talking about Malik Obama, the president's brother in Kenya, uh, on uh, last week. And the way the Barack H. Obama Foundation had been given 501c3 status personally by Lois Lerner, personally, in nothing flat. Um, and people, people said, well, what is, what, what's, the, what's the deal with that? This is the first I've heard about it. I didn't know anything, anything about that. And you can read more about it at thedailycaller.com. And you can also read the guy, a guy who's done a lot of the legwork on the uh, Islamic uh, end of it, is Walid Shubat, who has his own website, Shubat, S-O-H-O-E-B-A-T dot com. He's, uh, he, he, and, and basically, the way to start is to look at the list. Uh, what, what, is, what is going on here is we're giving tax breaks. Uh, indirectly, we're giving tax breaks to the butchers of Darfur. Uh, you remember Darfur? George Clooney and co. used to be all uh, steamed up about it a couple of years ago when Bush was in uh, office. There were uh, millions of people hacked to death uh, with machetes. Usual low-grade stuff. 
uh, uh, the, 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 the less uh, sophisticated technology you have, the, the bloodier it is. And machetes are the bloodiest thing at all. So hundreds of thousands of people getting hacked to death in Darfur. The president of Sudan is a guy called uh, Omar al-Bashir, who is a war criminal. He's been indicted on genocide charges by the International Criminal Court at The Hague. And you can say, yes, yes, well, they'd love to do that to Don Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney too. That's how bad this Sudanese guy is, folks. He's as bad as Dick Cheney or Don Rumsfeld. This guy, he's committed genocide. He's been indicted for genocide. Uh, if he happened to be... He now, by the way, when he flies in on his presidential jet, he's now escorted by fighters. Because at one point, uh, there was talk about Western governments sending fighters to intercept his plane and take him to a Western nation and put him on trial for genocide. Omar al-Bashir. Uh, President of Sudan. Sudan itself is a terrorist state, right? A terrorist state uh, designated as such by the State Department of the United States. Now, everyone thinks, people bandy that term around, oh, terrorist state, terrorist state. It's actually quite hard to get into. It's very exclusive. It's not like getting the most ethical environmental protection administrator of the year award like that f fake ID guy did uh, three years running, the a guy who doesn't exist. This, it's actually quite hard to get on the State Department's terrorist state list. There are only four countries on the list. Cuba, Iran, Syria, Sudan. So this is a litany. North Korea can't get on this list. North Korea's been trying for years. North Korea's on the waiting list to get on the State Department terrorist state list. Can't do it. Can't do it. It's just four. It's super elite. It's the, the, it's the most elite club in the world. It's more elite than uh, the, the Queen's Order, Most Honourable Order of the Garter. I think they've got 24 Garter Knights. They haven't got 24 terrorist states at the State Department. There's only four. It's, that, it's such an exclusive club, North Korea can't get into it. Cuba, Iran, Syria, and Sudan, right? So, Barack Obama's brother, and I mentioned last week that they're quite close. They went to, they were best men at each other's weddings, <laughs> although... Barack Obama has only had one wedding, whereas uh, Malik Obama has 12 wives. And I don't think Barack Obama was best man at all 12 weddings. But they were, he was best man at one of these 12 weddings. And uh, his brother gets elected president, and Malik, Malik Obama immediately thinks, wow, there's some big bucks here. So he sets up a foundation, the Barack H. Obama Foundation, named after... Uh, the president's father and his father. And Americans looking for something to give money to. He says, give your tax-deductible donations to us. This is starting in 2008. He says, give your tax-deductible donations to us. And Americans open their hearts and their wallets because it's supposed to be helping with affordable housing in Kenya. There's no evidence it has ever done anything for affordable housing except for Malik Obama, who lives in a house that most of us could never dream of affording. It's gone to fund his lifestyle. Uh, it also goes to fund him holding conferences in Sudan, the terrorist state, conferences organized by Omar al-Bashir, the guy wanted for genocide, in the terrorist state. Now, there's four of these terrorist states. If you're an American, you're not allowed to do business with any of these states. You can't do business with Iran. You can't do business with Syria. You can't do business with Cuba. And you can't do business with Sudan. But the president's brother is doing all the business he wants with Sudan. He's holding conferences in Sudan. His website, if you go to the Barack H. Obama Foundation website, which I believe is B H O F. Let me see. I'll pull it. I'll pull it up here. B H O F. Uh, it's something like B H O F dot org. I'll I'll find it for you. But you go there, and he's got all these pictures. He's taken down the one of the genocidal murderer, but he's still got all the pictures of the big conference that he was the big guest of honor at. Uh, in in Sudan. So just walk through this with me. You've got a guy who's got a, a, a fraudulent operation. Uh, he's not collecting money for any legitimate purpose. He's telling people, it's ta he's telling Americans it's tax deductible because it's named after the president's father. And he's using it uh, to host big conferences in a terrorist state hosted by a man wanted for genocide. He applied, he's doing this from 2008, 
uh, in 2000, with a post, with a, a false address, fake address in Washington, 2011, he decides he, he's gonna, he wants to actually apply for 501c3 status. Lois Lerner, unlike the Tea Party groups, like any of those Tea Party groups, Lois Lerner personally signs off on this within a month and backdates it over two and a half years to December 2008. Now she can't, she doesn't have the power to do that. It's actually illegal uh, to be running a fake, uh, a, a fake uh, tax deductible uh, operation, a fake tax exempt organization. It's illegal to take that uh, money for more than two and a quarter years without getting your 501c3 status. Here's the website, by the way, Barack H. Obama Foundation dot org. Uh, Barack H. Obama Foundation dot org. Uh, so Lois Lerner actually commits a crime here. She, she, she does something that is not in her power to do. You don't, you're not able to backdate it more than two and a quarter years. Yet she decides for the president's brother to backdate it two and a half years. Backdate it two and a half years. She committed a crime doing that. She doesn't have the power to do that. Unless we no longer live in a land of laws, but live in a land of Lois, where, where bureaucrats are able to make up their, the laws at whim and apply them to different peoples at whim. So that if you're running a Tea Party group in Phoenix, Arizona, you get, you get, uh, put through the ringer for three years, but if you're the president's brother, you get you get yours backdated two and a half years, and you get to give all your tax deductible donations to the butchers of Darfur uh, to break the laws on terrorist states. So j just again, just 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 walk through this very slowly. What is it when you get five hundred one c three status? When people say that. Uh, if you give donations to this 501c3 entity, it's tax deductible. You, it doesn't count as income for you on which you have to pay tax. So the government of the United States is making a decision that it's going to forswear uh, revenue for a good cause. And this country's broke. It's $20 trillion in debt, the federal government. So it actually needs the revenue. But it says that for a good cause, it will forego the revenue because you are giving it to a good cause. In other words, uh, the, the legitimate tax payers of, of, of America are having to shoulder more of the burden. And in this case, in effect, American taxpayers are subsidizing the president's brother to go and party with the genocidal butcher of Darfur in one of the only four terrorist states on the planet. This IRS scandal, this IRS scandal uh, is absolutely disgraceful. There should be no question about it that this entity, whatever whatever arguments one may one, once have made about a few bad apples here and a few bad apples there, it's not that. It's corrupt to its core. It's corrupt in the most basic sense that government should be, that it should treat all peoples equally, and it doesn't. Omar al-Bashir gets better treated from Lois Lerner than law-abiding American citizens.